Gospels about where the, where the rich man died and Lazarus died and the rich man was conquered and he actually spat in the snow with the water to go warm my brother. When I hear these, these has actually died for the word of God. Mm -hmm. And see, it doesn't rob us of our conscience. No. As you, they said, how long are you going to, you just like the, the rich man cried out for, for mercy and for mm -hmm. water and stuff. And here they're crying under the altar of God. How long are we going to have to wait before you take the vengeance and, and the judgment that you promised that would be upon on the world? Yeah. And, and the world is is the people that is not accepting Christ. Mm -hmm. So even, even their spirit still has the same characteristics of impatience. <coughs> so he tells us to rest for a little season or to rest just a little while, he's saying. While they, while they waiting on now, he says, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. He says, you're not the only ones that's going to be slain for the word of God. Mm -hmm. There's others that's going to be slain for the word of God. Yeah. So just rest for a little while. Tell all these other brothers and sisters that testify my name. They won't come up here too. Just rest for a while. He said, <clears throat> he says, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. What was their question? How long does thou not judge and avenge? So we, we see the judge part. Now here comes the avenge part. He says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became a flood. We, we can't even really imagine it. I mean, we can hear the words and kind of get a small picture of it, but we can't really imagine what, what is happening here. And, uh, what, what study I've done on this, uh, the term black is like sackcloth. The sackcloth was a, was a coarse woolen fabric worn by ancient Israelites as a symbol of mourning for the dead or for disaster or for repentance. <laughs> now, now if this sun turns black to sackcloth, if, if, they, if we went back and studied that, what it meant, it was a symbol for morning. I can see, I can see morning taking place at this yeah. time. For the dead. I can see it says for disaster. There's disaster everywhere. And it's it's for repentance. There's repentance everywhere too. There, there's still people being saved. And uh, it talks about in Isaiah 50 and 3 and Joel and 2 and 31. It, they, they, they both predict this, this darkness that John writes about. So he says, I saw it, uh, it, it there's a great earthquake. And the sun became black as set off of air, and the moon became as blood. For the moon to become as blood would be as, as drastic as the sun to become dark. Black as set off. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now we know that any, any tree that bears fruit, the, the fruit is going to hold on until it's dry. And then it'll fall. But now you take a wind coming through there to shake that tree, you go up to the apple tree and just kick it. Some other kind of force will cause that fruit tree to drop its fruit. But he's comparing this to a fig tree. Like if you're standing under a fig tree or an apple tree, you can kind of keep your eyes up looking and watching. And if you see one start to fall, you can move out of the way. But this is, he's talking about the sky now. As the sky starts, starts uh, casting down things, he says, just like a fig tree, when it, it's shaking the mighty wind, and the heaven parted as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. It says every mountain. Can you imagine what an earthquake that's going to be? 
to where the whole world feels it. You know, we have aftershocks from three or four states away from an earthquake. This is going to be one that will shake the entire world. It says every mountain and island is moved out of their places. We're surrounded by mountains. Can you just imagine every one of these mountains being moved? At one time. And the kings of the earth and the, and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we, we know the people that's led are those that are under the power of the Antichrist. So all these people that's mentioned, look here again in verse 15, and the kings of the earth, these are people that feel like they don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the ones that's under the rule of the, of the Antichrist, and they feel like the Antichrist has got everything under control. I don't have to worry about this. I'm not going to be punished. <coughs> so here we got the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men. They think their money's going to save them. It don't matter if a star starts falling out of the sky. It don't mean nothing to me. I got all kinds of money. Mm -hmm. I was probably a shelter that will hide me. Mm -hmm. And the chief captains, they, this is captains over these men, these soldiers that went out and slain these people for the word of God. And the mighty men, every bond man and every free man, what they do, it says they hid themselves in the bends and in the, in the rocks of the mountains. And said to 